Hi, we are Team Reactive. My name is Amy, and I'll be presenting along with Tom, Adam, and Karen. And we're going to be discussing how we can aid athletes in their return to sport following ACL injury. We'll be discussing various steps of our design process, beginning with the background then going into device design, the software design, how we validated our device, some cost analysis and market pricing, as well as our next steps. But we'll be begin with background on the project. The anterior cruciate ligament is one of the key ligaments that helps to stabilize your knee joint. It connects your femur to your tibia, and it's most commonly torn during sports that involve sudden stops and changes in direction, such as basketball, soccer, tennis, and volleyball. Thus, as you might guess, it most commonly affects teenagers and school-aged children. Additionally, recovery takes an average of seven months, which can be devastating for young athletes. Young athletes returning to sport from injury have a 23% incidence of re-injury. And why is this? This is because they often return to play before they're ready to. Physical therapists must determine when an athlete can return to sport, often based off of qualitative measurements of them doing various movements, such as a single leg squat jump, cuts, and box jumps. If a physical therapist could quantify the nuances of these movements, it could help them to more reliably predict when an athlete is ready to return to sport. Quantification of this can be done using a force plate or a high-speed camera. However, these are both costly and difficult to access. Furthermore, the existing wearable devices don't provide force data for impact moments, which physical therapists have explicitly requested. To this end, we want to develop a low-cost platform for PTs to quantify when athletes can be cleared for sport. So to do this, we've created a low-cost wearable device that measures ground, reaction force, and knee angle. We've placed the accelerometer and Arduino microcontroller at the waist and gyrometers at the knees for knee angle measurements. Our project goals include being usable, a, comp uh, a compact wearable device. We want it to be accurate within 2% of industry standard ground reaction force. We want the knee, knee rotation angle to capture the changes in the knee angle quickly and accurately with 100 degree per second uh, measurement rate. We want the cost to be less than $200 and we want a friendly graphical interface for PTs to be able to interact with. So this is a demonstration of our device shown on Tom here at our at CHOP. Um, it, the device can be connected via MATLAB, calibrated. Once the data starts recording, you can see that there are peaks from Tom jumping. You can also see in the lower graph um, for the knee angle, there are two peaks per jump, one for when he starts his jump and one for when he ends. The data collection can be stopped as well as saved out. For our hardware design, we wanted to keep it compact and only use uh, and use as few things as possible. So we've nar uh, narrowed it down to a microcontroller with two gyrometers and an accelerometer. For hardware iteration through our design process, we went from a athletic waistband to a Velcro band because this would allow us to have less noise in the data um, collection. Along with this, we've switched from an Arduino uh, Rev2 Wi-Fi for, to an Arduino Uno Maker 1010 for faster data transmission. Switching to a smaller Arduino also helps the form factor. However, we had to create a separate way to power the sensors. We've also iterated over the sensors we have been using. Uh, we started with using a 200G accelerometer, which can measure accelerations up to 200 times the force of gravity, but we found that this range was much wider than what we needed for measuring jumps. Um, replacing this with a 16G accelerometer allowed for much more um, precise measurements of the acceleration uh, experienced by the patient while jumping. We've also iterated through our software design process. So we started with a smartphone app that commuted via Bluetooth to a microcontroller um, where the microcontroller received data from the sensors and sent the data over Bluetooth to the app. Um, but we switched that to using a computer program to allow more accessibility for physical therapists. And this way the data collected by the microcontroller is now displayed on a computer for analysis by the physical therapist. This is what our computer uh, app looks like. So on the left, there are buttons for controlling the device, uh, starting and stopping data recording and saving data. 
And then on the right are the readouts from the device. So on the top is it a graph that shows the acceleration experienced during a jump, and on the bottom plots the knee angle experienced during a jump. We've also verified that our accelerometer is accurate. Uh, we've done this by comparing the readout from our own accelerometer to a much more expensive one at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And we found there to be about 13% error in the peak acceleration measurement. We've also done some qualitative validation of our device. So as can be seen here, the first, we did two jumps were with a soft landing uh, and compare that to two jumps with a hard landing. And it can be seen that the peak accelerations from the soft landing are as expected much smaller than from a hard landing. Similarly, with the knee angle measurements, with the soft landing, there are two large knee angle changes per jump as can be expected from loading the jump and from landing the jump softly. And with the hard landing, the second knee angle change is much smaller because the knee is not absorbing, um, it's not absorbing the jump as much. In addition to validation with the second accelerometer and examining the knee angle, we were also able to compare the acceleration um, that our accelerometer was measuring with the force, with the impact force that a force plate was measuring. As, as you can see in the picture, there were atoms standing on a force plate. Um, as you can see on the graph on the right, we got a real, we got a particular, we got a pretty good R squared value um, between the acceleration that our accelerometer was measuring and the acceleration that we derived from the force that the force plate was measuring. We simply took the force that the plate was measuring and divided it out by the mass of the patient jumping on it. Um, as you can see here, we got an R squared of 0.6, which is pretty good. But our next steps, we're actually going to be looking to see if we can use possibly a neural net to see if we can get a better, a better fit between the model and the data. In addition, we're planning to validate the knee angle that our gyrometers are measuring. So on the left, you can see a high-speed camera. Um, that's actually the high-speed camera from Dr. Meany's lab. And we're planning to use that to visually validate the knee angle that's being measured by our gyrometers, as you can see in the little picture on the right. And lastly, um, this is a cost analysis of what it took to build our device. Um, and the total, in total, it came out to $183. And so we actually met our goal of being under $200. The most expensive um, parts here were actually the sensors, which cost about $100. Great. And lastly, we've got two kind of directions that we plan to take our project. Uh, number one, we really want to make sure that our gyrometers are being accurate. So we're going to take steps to calibrate them more accurately. Um, and that's going to be in involve holding the gyrometers in different orientations and calibrating them out to zero using Earth's gravity as a reference. Um, and second, as I mentioned before, we're going to be using a neural net to correlate VGRF and acceleration. We got a pretty good correlation just using linear regression, um, but we're hoping we can get a better correlation using a neural net that can account for nonlinearities. And lastly, we'd like to thank Aaron Anderson, Seville Venikrot, Dr. Brian DePaolo, Dr. Dave Meany, and Michael Patterson, and all the BE Lab staff, as well as our mentors, Dr. Elliot Greenberg and Valentina Gracie, um, for mentoring us and helping us through this project.